So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about strings in C sharp. Now strings are instances of the system string class, and this means they come in with multiple methods and various properties already available to us. I have a little C sharp project here, and let's talk about the different ways that we can instantiate this string class. We can do it with var. This is just an implicitly typed local variable. And all that really means is that the compiler automatically determines the type based on the assigned value at compile time. So for example, if we say var first name equals, then because we've assigned first name this value, var is going to infer that this is a string. Another way that we can declare a string is by using string. And so let's do string last name. The final way that you can declare it is using the string class, which is uppercase. Let's do email address. So we have three different strings that we've declared here and three different ways. Type a variable name, the assignment operator, then the string itself. Notice that we use double quotes. Double quotes are used for strings in C sharp, but single quotes would be used for characters or of the character type. Now let's talk about some common operations. One might be concatenation, and there's multiple ways that you can join two strings. With concatenation, you would do it something like this. If we did var full name equals first name. So this is concatenation where we have first name, the plus a space, the plus. And so then let's take a look at the output here. So we'll do a console.writeline full name, and then we'll just run this. And in the debug console, you can see we got this. There's another way that we could do this though, is with interpolation. So if we did, let's just use the same variable, full name equals, and then we were to use interpolation, you would do that with the uh, dollar sign symbol. And so then here we do curly braces, and then we let's do last name, curly brace, comma, first name. And so what we're doing here is the dollar sign preceding the string allows us to use these curly braces and inject an actual variable into its place. So then if we were to take this same console right line and debug again, so here we go, developing whoop, and then whoop, comma, developing. And so that's exactly what we have there. So that's interpolation. Then we have string format, and this is just another way of joining strings. So what we could do here is say uh, full name equals string, and this is a method from the class, so string format, and then we could do zero, you'll do curly braces, inside the curly braces, let me move my mouse all the way, do curly braces zero, curly braces one, last name, first name, and you can add multiple parameters inside the inside here. So what happens here with string format is the first parameter after the string is going to be is going to replace the curly braces zero. And the second parameter is going to be curly braces one. But then you could also do something like two. And then we could add the email address. And then if we and just to make it more clear that this is an email address, let's just add at and if we run it again, and it will show that as well. Concatenation, interpolation, string format. Uh, we can also use something like string join, but a string join would be used in the instance where you have an array. So if we did string array, names array, which is a terrible name, don't call something that, curly braces, and then we say first name, comma, last name, so an email address, so that we're providing all the names in this array, then we can say full name equals string dot join. String dot join is going to join all of these into one string using the delimiter that we provide. So we say, I want them to be separated by a comma and a space, and then I'm gonna provide the names array, and then we're going to console write line full name. And here we can do something like, this we could do dollar sign using something we've already learned and say this is a string array join and then curly brace because we're getting a little bit long and we want to keep track of everything so now we have this is a string array join and then we have developing woot and then the email address and so these are all separated by the comma and the space if we were to take out the space and then run it you would see that that space is then gone there as well join array just so you can take a look at all of those if you want to take a screenshot give you a second so you may at times want the length of a string you do var first name length 
equals first name dot length. And then we could console right line first name length. And so that'll give us the length of the first name. So you can see the first name is or developing is 10 characters long. Something else you might want to do with a string is access a character at a specific part of the string. So for example, if you were searching through a bunch of strings and you wanted to find all the strings that the first letter was W, you could say var first letter equals, and then let's do last name zero. And so this uses an index to get the very first character of a string. So if we go ahead and run this, you can just see how that works. So we grab the first character from the last name and that was a W. Something else you might want to do is conversion. So perhaps you want the first name to only be in uppercase. So we could do first name upper and perhaps you want to do the last name only in lowercase. And so if we run that, we can see how that will change. Developing is upper is lower. You can also trim strings. So in this situation, I have a space at the beginning and a space at the end, and I've used string interpolation, but I've gone ahead and trimmed both of these, but I added a dash at the beginning and a dash at the end. That way when we run these, we can see that the spaces are actually removed. So you see here, we have both those spaces removed, the one at the beginning and the one at the begin at the end. The two indicator here means it printed the exact same thing twice. So it was able to trim whether it's the beginning or the end, both using the trim command, which is very helpful if somebody's submitting a form and you want to make sure that they're not adding additional spaces at the end of their email address or something like that. And then you're saving that to the database and causing all kinds of problems for you later on down the road. You don't want that. Another thing that's really nice is substring extraction. So if we do var full name and then we use our string interpolation that we've learned, and we say uh, first name and last name. So now we have full name, but let's say for example, we had the full name, but we wanted to get the last name. So you could do something like full name dot substring zero and what did we say developing was 10. So then we can write this out and just have it print first. And if we do that, you'll be able to see that it printed just developing. So it extracted that from there. Now in instances like practical use cases of this, you might not do 10, you might do something like full name dot index of, and then the space. So then when you run this, it's going to look, it's going to count this as the end of the string. So that's a way for you to grab the name. So this is more practical use of where you might use substring when you want to grab just the first name and maybe it's separated by a comma, maybe it's separated by a space, maybe it's separated by a dot, who knows. But anyway, that's you look for the index of whatever the separating value is and then you can extract just the first name out of it, something like that. And then you could even replace parts of the string. For example, we could say updated name equals and you could do full name dot replace. And like, let's say we wanted to replace developing with something else like taco. So then let's see just what that produces if we were to replace developing with taco. Now we have taco woot. Mm, I'm hungry. Not really. Taco woot sounds gross. So the next thing we can do is we can do some string comparison. Let's do bool is equal. And we'll say first name equals developing and then we'll do a and then we'll write this out to the console that's one way to do a string comparison so another way you can do string comparison is actually using the string compare and the way you do that is it's going to produce an int and so maybe we call it comparison we don't want to compare first name to last name so let's do something like string dot compare and let's compare taco to taco and then let's just write that to the console and see what happens. Uh, so it pulls out a one, which means that they do not equal. So if we were to say taco and uppercase that T because string compare considers casing and that's evident by zero, but you can also tell it to ignore casing by using string compare or no case. 
And so now with the lowercase before we got one on that and we run this again and we get zero. So they're saying they do match because we're telling it to ignore case. Another way that you can tell it to ignore case is by using the equals method. So if we were to say bool first name equals method e equals first name dot equals and then develop and let's do it lowercase developing and so this would produce false but here we have string comparison dot or no ignore case and if we write this to the console you can see then that is going to produce a true so the equals will give you the bool whereas the string compare gives you an int where zero is matching and anything else is not so that's how we can do string comparisons so we have escape characters in strings as well. Here is a list of some common escape characters that you will use. There's slash n for a new line, slash t for a tab. To escape a backslash, you add a backslash in front of it. And to escape a double quote, you add a backslash in front of it. And this is useful in instances where you want to create a path to a specific location. You do something like this where you are able to actually store the path. You can also use something which I think makes it a little bit more reader, readable, which is called verbatim strings. So if we said string vpath for verbatim path, now you can just do, verbatim strings are also good for multi-line strings. So if we do something like this, we can then say, this is a multi-line string. And in some respects, this is very practical for readability in the code. But one of the things you have to watch out for is you might think, oh, this is gonna add new lines. But I found instances where it does and instances where it doesn't. So make sure if you use this, like if you're using this to format an email, this is probably not gonna work. So you wanna format your emails in other ways if you're sending emails via your code. All right, so that's escape characters. Now let's talk about uh, null checks for null or empty string. So there's a couple of different ways to check if the string is null or empty. You can use string dot is null or empty. That's one way. You can use string dot is null or white space. That's another way. What exactly is the difference? A string that is a null is like this. This string is null. There's nothing here, right? You could have string and this is gonna create an empty string. And so this string is basically gonna look like this, right? There's nothing in it. A null string, there's no address or location in memory. Is white space, right? This is important to note because a white space string looks like this, right? So in this instance, I tend to favor is null or white space because it's gonna check for all three of these. And typically, it, like if somebody's submitting a form or something like that, and you're gonna be entering data into your database, you don't want a bunch of empty strings entered into your database. So by checking, is null or white space, you're gonna verify that it's any one of these scenarios and then you can execute whatever the appropriate task is in your particular scenario. Another thing that's popular in strings is using the string builder class to create strings that are going to be changing quite frequently or building a long string out of a bunch of variables. This is not something that we're gonna cover in this tutorial. Something else I wanted to mention just because you hear sometimes that strings are just a character array. So what are some differences? And this is where we're gonna get into the immutability of strings and the importance of knowing that a string is immutable. Part of the reason that this happens is because if we create a character array for the full name. So if we do full name dot two character array, now this is a character array. And so if we were to uh, console dot right line, full name character array, right? What do you think we're gonna get? It might surprise you. It is the full name. And if we said just full name and run it again, it's not really what I expected. They're identical, which is part of the reason that people come to the conclusion, oh, a string is just a character array. But here's something to check. You say is array. So this is gonna output uh, a Boolean value. And if we run this, you can see that the full name character array is an array, but the compiler is telling you that full name, this string is not an array. And the biggest difference here in why a string is not an array is the fact that strings are immutable. So for example, we could, now that full name is a character array, we could say full name character array, and let's say zero equals, um, let's go with R, right? Uh, no. So we say zero equals R. 
So we're taking the first character of our character array and we're converting it to an R. So let's just delete these so it'll actually print the character arrays and see if this changed. Okay, so we created a new word here. That's excellent. And that's what you're trying to do when your programming is okay. Not really, but you can totally see that the character array for the full name, it did change. You were allowed to replace that variable, but is that true with just the full name who that is a string? So if we say full name zero equals R, now we're getting a compiling error. It cannot be assigned. It's read only. Why? Because strings are immutable, but you're also kind of thinking, wait a second, strings aren't really immutable, are they? Because I could do this and change this to double quotes. Okay, so the difference in what's happening here, the old string that we had that said developing is being removed, and this is now a new string that's taking its place of just R. So the string is immutable. You can't change it where it is. You can only replace it. Whereas with the full name character array, we are able to replace specific values. So a string is not an array. Um, it is immutable. That's a big difference, and it's something that could be very useful for you to keep in mind. Part of the reason it's so important that strings use immutability is because strings can be used as keys for dictionaries. So this allows them to be used for comparisons so you can trust that they won't change. It also allows them to be inherently thread safe. And then even in .NET, it uses a mechanism called string interning and what this means is that identical string literals are, can be stored in the same memory locations for better memory management. Because strings are indexable, a lot of times people can think, oh, a string is just a character away, array. And it's true. In a lot of scenarios, it does function like a character array. Just to recap, here are the cliff notes of this. In this video, we talked about strings and the three different ways that you can assign strings to variables. Uh, we talked about the concatenation of strings, the interpolation of strings, using the string format and string join methods, getting the length of a string, accessing specific indexes of a string, case conversion for strings, trimming white spaces, substring extraction, uh, as well as using the replace function to replace specific parts of a string. We also discuss string comparisons, how to use the equal sign to compare strings, how to use string.compare, how to use uh, .equals, how to use string comparison or null ignore case to verify cases. We also talked about escape characters. We talked about the verbatim string. We talked about how to null check strings, checking if it's null, if it's empty, or if it's just a white space. And then we discussed how a string is different than a character array. If you're still watching the video, please consider giving it a like, possibly subscribing. We appreciate the support. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time.